instrument's going on, uh, Tiggy is on, ignition is on. Okay, clip up. Okay, we're all good, engine is running. Let's get set up to fly. Oh. We have a slight crosswind tonight, but it's due to back off in the next hour, and I intend on being up for more than an hour. Should be quite nice. Right, helmet's done, instruments done, instruments is reset, fuel sufficient for the flight, I've got 11 litres. Uh, awareness, it's only this runway that I can use. The weather is uh, sufficient and suitable for the flight I'm about to do. Controls and eventualities on this wind, and as I've checked on the way in, I will be landing in the cornfield down the bottom. So. Check. Okay, no one coming in. Uh, ah, aircraft overhead. It looks like the aircraft's coming in as well. Always good to do a check. I'm not sure the camera will be picking that up, but there is an aircraft dead ahead. I'm going to save some fuel. Oh. Turn the engine off. Busy using this farm strip spin. I always say look out. Final power check as has been engine off. That's it. Okay, wind is from the right. Right wing down, bar neutral. Taking off. Far coming forward. Much smoother than last night. It's been quite nice actually being able to fly two nights in a row. I just needed to get my feet off the deck last night. So I think tonight I'm going to go and have a look at Minehead. There's a little tower over here and I can't quite tell if it's a tower or a house. It's got a load of scaffolding around it so it's obviously under restoration. But it's just perched on top of a hill and it would be such a cool house if you had that. I'll try and do some research, put an overlay as to what that is. Yes, significantly, significantly smoother than last night. So tonight was that prime example of checking the runway before I lined up. There's no radio calls, but it's just doing that airmanship of looking out. I would naturally go, if I was a lot higher, go straight for mine head. But I don't know if the camera can see, there's actually like a little ravine around here and a big forest area which gives me absolutely no outs. So I will take a little bit longer, a little bit further route, and give myself as many options as possible. And also on this side is a road. <laughs> so the last time I went to Minehead was in a paramotor. And the only reason I stopped there was actually to fill up with fuel. It was on the Icarus X and they changed the route and I couldn't carry enough to get there to the second check, the first checkpoint and then to my landing stop. So I was doing my maths in flight and going, <laughs> I physically haven't got enough fuel. Um, so I had to land in the field, walk to Tesco's with two bladder bags, fuel bags, and then walk back. And it was the most stressful launch I've ever done. Four failed launches covered in sweat, I think I was carrying about 22 litres of fuel. I was 
super heavy, super heavy, in really turbulent launching conditions. So uh, yeah, my back was very pleased to be off the ground after that launch. So I thought tonight I'll just go back and have a look at Minehead. So again, the, the cameras never do it justice, but that's Wales over there. And I think I can almost see Cardiff Airport. Got Port Talbot over there. If I was feeling brave, fly to, uh, to Wales and backs, but I don't think I will, not in a two stroke. So anyway, I'm going to uh, put on some tunes and I'll join you later in the flight. So enjoy the scenery. is very much a, uh, a seaside town and I can see the field that I landed in and I can spot the Tesco so not many outs at the moment so I'm going to turn short there's a little uh, it's like a little castle I wonder if I can get a picture of that because that looks very intriguing as to what that is all these again all these little things you don't see while you're on the ground or don't live in the area anyway well, it's certainly been a glorious evening to fly the coastline. So there's quite there's two big bits of airspace down there around the power stations. So you can't really get down much further down there without hitting the uh, that restriction. The other thing is because of Cardiff being over there, the highest I could ever climb here without going about 15 miles that way is ten and a half thousand feet or flight level 10.5. I think that would be a, a, a nice suitable challenge in the future. Not for one for the dead of winter anyway, but... Getting to uh, 10,000 feet in my PB would be a cool flight to do. Right, well the airfield's in sight now, and I'm just going to do my, uh, my joining checks and get ready for a landing. It's been quite a pleasant evening, and... Uh, so much better than last night's uh, lumpy bumpy flight this has definitely been uh, a nice change so what we've done up harness is done up fuel is sufficient for the journey back and any go rounds if required there are no frequent no radio calls to make and the aircraft seems like it's not there and it's gone so I just need to get down because I'm really high Keep clear of the village. Do a crosswind join for the farm strip. Anyone else? Anyone else on the circuit? No, no one else. Can't see anyone else in the circuit here. I think I'll be making my base leg a bit too far downwind. Anyone on final that I can see on the base? No one on final. And we're down smoothly. 
a little bit of a tuttle on the nose but nothing to worry about so just to wrap this up it's just one of those nice flights uh, i hope you enjoyed that flight to uh, to minehead it's nice to go back there and just have a look at where i've flown before um, and i say always keeping a lookout uh, you never know on farm strips this is the only farm strip i've ever operated from like this and uh, if when there's no radios you don't know what's going on with the traffic so for me just keeping a lookout and that final check before you uh, commit to getting on the, on the active runway so that's it for now so until the next time everybody fly safe